Hey, Geralt. Eskel. I wanted to talk about Deirdre. Fine, but we should tend to the Kikimors first. We need to destroy their cocoons. The art is best for that. It's dark inside, so down a dose of cat. Let's go. Something about Deirdre? Uh, it was about 20 years ago. I rescued Deirdre's father from a gang of Bobalax. I must have heard too many of Vesemir's stories about the eternal law of surprise. We've all heard too many of those. The prince, spattered with Bobalak blood, looked at me and said, You saved my life, Witcher, as I am your debtor. Say what you wish in return. All I could think of was the famous line, You will give me what you know not that you have. I shall return to Kangorn six years from now to see if destiny acted in my favor. I never went back to Kangorn. Then rumors started circulating about the curse of the Black Sun. There was confusion. But that's another story. We have Kikimors to tend to. All right, but I'll have a few more questions.
chamber left. Let's take a breather. What do you know about the curse of the Black Sun? I did take an interest in it, and even bribed a certain wizard to let me look at documents drafted for the Council of Mages. I took some notes. It seems the mages screwed up as usual. Sabrina Glefisig was chosen to examine the Princess of Kangorn. It was hatred at first sight. Something about a guy. Women. It only got worse. Sabrina concluded she had enough proof to consider Deirdre a cursed mutant and to subject her to real studies. As I'm sure you've guessed, Deirdre had no intention of being examined, not least because she was a princess. She persuaded several of the prince's warriors to get rid of Sabrina. All hell broke loose at the castle in Kangorn. Many died, and there was some priestess among the corpses. What did the priestess have to do with anything? Nothing. From what I know, she landed in the wrong place at the wrong time. After it was all over, Deirdre fled the castle. And the pursuit continues to this day. Exactly. I'll give you my notes on the curse when we're done with Akiki Morris. Let's get to work. What do we do with Deirdre? I really don't know, Geralt. I understand Vesemir's viewpoint, but I'm not keen on surrendering the girl to the sorceress. I expect she'd meet an unpleasant end. You have to make this decision on your own. I know, though at this point the matter concerns you as well. It concerns all the Witchers. Fine, we'll consider it. Give me the notes and let's get out of here.
Greetings, Geralt. Good thing you're here. Greetings. How is the path? Tolerable. Nothing groundbreaking. What is going on here, Vesemir? We've got a bit of a problem. The Princess of Cainghorn arrived two days ago, claiming her envious brother and an evil sorceress were pursuing her. She's asked for our protection. She's got her castles all wrong. No knights in shining armor here. She was in bad shape. Hungry. Cold. We didn't have the heart to drive her off. Mm -hmm. And Eskel was acting strange. Before the girl fell asleep, she said one more thing. That one cannot flee one's fate. Later, Eskel told me a story. Some twenty years ago, he saved the Prince of Cainghorn's life. He cited the law of surprise, and as they say, destiny proved fortunate. Unbeknownst to the prince, his wife was with child. I'm not sure that was entirely fortunate. So you've heard of the curse. In any case, on a day when the sky was dark as night at high noon, the princess gave birth to a girl. As far as I know, Eskel never returned to claim the child promised him by the prince. For some reason, ever since then, he's always taken the long way around Cainghorn. So, now we need to deal with the brother of Eskel's unexpected child, a retinue of mercenaries, and a sorceress bent on dissecting the woman she suspects of being a mutant. As if that's not enough, the brother carries a letter of safe conduct from King Henselt himself. So we can hardly just drive them all away. What do we do? Talk to Eskel. She's his surprise. We'll meet back at the Ford Lambert is guarding. Think it through, Wolf. I want to hear your opinion. I've spoken to him. Let's go, then. Geralt. I'm Deirdre. Eskel spoke of you. I've heard a few things about you, too. If you mean from that lying shrew Glavisig. Calm down. I don't tend to judge based on rumors. Geralt? Your wolves' eyes are glazed over with hunger. They're starved. Because of that bitch Sabrina, I cannot venture beyond the fortress walls. They choose to remain at my side, thus depriving themselves of the opportunity to hunt. You seem to have a better understanding with wolves than with humans. I raised them from when they were cubs. In a sense, they are my only friends. All right, I'll see if I can find something for them. I spotted several wyverns in the area, on the peninsula across the river from the camp. If you could slay three of them and bring me their meat, I'll reward you. Reward me? I have a runestone that can be cast into a blade. What did you think I had in mind? Nothing. I'll be back soon. Geralt? I'll be going.
to feast. Here you go, pups. They won't accept anything from you. I'll feed them myself. Diabol, Banshee, here is the rune I promised you, Witcher. Nice barble. Geralt. What do you want from Eskel? You can be disarmingly kind. That was brusque. You're right. Sorry. I want him to stop fleeing his destiny. And become Prince of Kangorn? Are you feeling all right, Deirdre? Eskel is a witcher. What of it? It seems you don't know how childish your witches' mores sound. I constantly hear things like, we're witches, witches have no feelings, and so on. You don't fool me. You have feelings, emotions, you're like all people except faster. I cannot fathom why you strive so hard to hide that. It's rarely wise to fight a legend. Sometimes you have to make do with it. Perhaps. But I'm not deceived. Deirdre, do you know what Sabrina and your brother want from you? Isn't it obvious? Sabrina wants to place my sweet little brother on the throne of Cainghorn. My brother, who is entirely subservient to her, and who, as the Prince of Cainghorn, will have a vote on King Hansel's council. I was asking about something else. All right, then. She believes me to be cursed, tainted in my mother's very womb. She believes me to be a monster. Are you? How the hell should I know? When I prick my finger, I bleed. I also bleed each month. When I eat too much, my stomach aches. I sing when I am joyful. And when I feel hatred, I kill. I don't know if I'm a monster. Yet I do know what Sabrina is capable of. She is a monster you seek. Explain. I'd like to hear your side. I was 19 and happy when Sabrina showed up at the castle. My father, who always preferred Merwin, was old and ill by this time, so he could no longer bother me. My brother had been away at King Hansel's court, and I could handle most of the courtiers. I was at a tender age, and I fell in love. His name was Robin. I even considered a morganatic marriage. Girlish fantasy. What does Sabrina have to do with this? She arrived with my brother, whom she already had on a short lead. She observed me, interrogated servants, tested the situation. My father's company of knights treated me like a daughter. I had always liked hunting took part in manhunts for bandits. She needed proof. Some spectacular way to defame me. And in your carelessness, you provided her with that proof. Sabrina decided to provoke me. She seduced Robin using magic so powerful that his mind became confused. He suddenly developed an intense fear of animals, especially of the dogs he bred. I wanted to help him. It was then I discovered that mages found it hard to cast spells in my presence, and that spells previously cast gradually subsided if I was near. I went to the small chamber Robin inhabited just above the kennel, and I found Sabrina there. I admit, I was enraged, wanting to tear her apart, but she was too quick. The hag flew out of the window on a broom. Robin was left drooling, whimpering like a child. Within an hour, he had ceased gibbering, and within two, he understood what the witch had done to him. I thought all was in order, and I could leave him. I wished to settle the score with her, and entered the castle. I know not what happened. But the spell grasped Robin once more as soon as I was gone. He began feverishly seeking Sabrina. In his wildness, he entered a pen occupied by a very aggressive hunting hound. Did he survive? Yes. Though mentally he became a two-year-old child. A child that feared animals intensely. Sabrina blamed the accident on me. I swore then that I would kill her. I carry a blade should I get the opportunity to use it. Why are you looking at me that way? Witcher, do you know many a princess wears Batiste next to her skin? Is that a question that befits a princess? What the hell can you know of princesses? I was one, and thus know quite well that the pleasure resides in being able to do whatever one wishes. Do I need to tell you what I want, or can you guess? nice. How did you find Kaer Morin? 
I always know where Eskel is. I merely need to think about him. Why are you looking at... Witcher. If you say so. Deirdre, Sabrina, and the nobleman. We should stay out of it. Geralt, we protect humans from monsters. That's our vocation. Meddling in human affairs only brings trouble. Do you mean the letter bearing King Hanselt's seal? Exactly. We can't afford to provoke the king. This could get sticky. I get your point. I'll see if I can learn some more. Wolf! Why is everyone outside? The keep is locked. I'd rather not unlock it with strangers around. We're better off spending a few days out in the open. That way I can be sure no one will go sniffing around the fortress. True enough. Wolf! Where's Deirdre? A little further on with her wolves. Tell me about the girl. She seems a bit strange, though I wouldn't call her a monster. Strange how? When she's near... My medallion goes wild, and I can't cast even the simplest signs. I can't explain it. Where's Deirdre? A little further on. I should... Wolf. What's your take on all this? Let's show that dandy and his witch what can happen when you threaten witchers. Call it a lesson in respect. So you think we should get involved? They came here, leaving us no choice. It would be cowardly to back down. Have you thought about how Esk will feel if we give up the girl? I'm trying to get some perspective on everything. Wolf. See you later. Wolf, gather as much information as you can. I think it's time we decided. We need to figure out what to do with Deirdre and her brother. Pascal wants everyone to say their peace. This concerns our safety and Kaer Morin. A mistake could cost us dearly. Let's do this. I'll start. I think we should stay out of this, meaning we can no longer shelter the girl. The reason is simple. If we meddle and Sabrina informs Henselt, Kedwin will be off limits to us for decades. Lambert? I don't really care for Deirdre, but I detest the fact that some blue blood who rules three coal hills comes here demanding obedience. This is Kaer Morin. Royal authority doesn't extend here. I think we need to drive away the noble and the sorceress. What about you, Eskel? I'm torn. I understand Vesemir. On the other hand, I owe the girl. I feel some kind of bond. I'm incapable of being objective. I'd like to hear your opinion, Wolf. Samir, we can't meddle. We need to be neutral. Geralt. Sorry, Eskel. That's what I believe. All right. 
I'll go tell her. Geralt, go with him. Not likely to be an easy conversation. I'll go. I'd love a fight. Lambert, this is serious. I'll go with Eskel. We'll join you in a bit. to Vesemir and Lambert. You must leave. You've made your choice. I expected as much, though I had hoped. You don't understand. Deirdre, we can't put Kaer Morhen at risk. They hardly love us as it is, and King Hensel can be irritable. So, you have chosen the lesser evil. The problem is, it is not the lesser evil to me. You have betrayed me like all who I ever trusted. Like my father, like Robin. Eskel. You'll pay for this. Deirdre, we won't give you up to the sorceress, but you can't stay at Kaer Morhen. Listen, please. No, Eskel, it is too late. You have made your choice and must endure the consequences. Eskel, watch out.
What happened? We need a magic healer. Eskel was cut across his face and stabbed in the gut. He'll be dead in 15 minutes. I'll need an hour to unlock the laboratory, release all the traps. I'll try to bring Sabrina here. Where's Deirdre? She cut up Eskel, summoned the Arcaspores, and fled. Impressive for a young woman. What happened? I sensed a change in the aura and got here as fast as I could. Where's the girl? She attacked us and fled. How could you let that happen? We must find her. We need to help Eskel first. He's seriously wounded. You need to use your magic. I could, of course, but why should I? This never would have happened if you had listened to me. Sabrina, please help him. Very well. But you must promise me something in exchange. You should have no trouble doing so after what happened here. You must pledge that none of you will impede my search for her. That's not too much to ask for the life of one of the last remaining witches, is it? We can't give you our word, and not because we don't want to. Eskel is bound to Deirdre by the law of surprise. It's his decision. We cannot make it for him. I'll be satisfied if you stop meddling, and if you advise Eskel likewise, should he ask. So be it. I agree. I'm glad to see you've come to your senses. Now let's tend to this brave soul. I've done all I can now. In a few days he'll be like new. I cannot remove the scar, it's his for good. Thank you, Sabrina. Yes, thanks. And I'm sorry. I had my doubts that you would help. Actually, Sabrina has her conditions. Explain. We promised to leave the matter to Sabrina. From now on, Deirdre Adamain, the one born beneath the black sun, belongs to me. I take it you will contest this no more. As agreed. Eskel? <sighs> Fine, Sabrina. You have my word. Uh, <clears throat> Sabrina Glevisig, we are ever so grateful for your selfless assistance, but there's nothing more to be said, and our witcher's duty calls. Enough, I think I understand. Farewell, witches. Deirdre had to leave. We couldn't afford to risk Kaer Morin. A witcher is no fairy tale prince. The princess should have looked elsewhere for someone to save her. A witcher doesn't meddle in the disputes of the nobly born. He remains neutral. Sometimes neutrality exacts a high price. For the next two years, Deirdre terrorized Southern Kedwin. Stories of her cruelty spread far and wide beyond the Yuruga River. Sabrina Glevisig finally succeeded. Deirdre Adamain was captured, tortured, and executed in the market square in Ard Kareg. An autopsy was performed. No extreme deviations were found. The witchers never again spoke of Deirdre. Though none ever forgot her, each carrying her memory in his heart.